All right, today we're taking a look at two cars which are both driving down the road at two different velocities. Now, the slower car is starting ahead of the faster car. And given enough time, this faster car is going to catch and overtake the slower car. So what we're going to solve for today is both when and where this faster car is going to catch the slower car somewhere over here. Now, before we just dive into the math of this problem, let's take a look at a graph which shows the position versus time for each of these cars as they move down the road. And this leads us to a decision that we need to make here, which is a bit arbitrary. And that is, which car is actually going to start at a position of zero? I'm going to say this faster car in back starts at a position of zero, which means when we look on the position versus time graph, you see that faster car starts at a position of zero and is steadily moving forward at 25 meters per second. And because we said the fast car starts at a position of zero, this slower car, which is starting out 100 meters ahead, is going to begin on our graph 100 meters further down the road. Or on our position axis, which is our y-axis, it's going to start at a position of 100. And this car is steadily moving down the road just like the faster car, but it's moving slower. And on our position versus time graph, that's going to look like a steady diagonal line, kind of like our fast car. But because the car's going slower, the slope is going to be a little bit more shallow. And if graphing the motion of an object is a bit new to you, that's all right. I'll link in the description some videos I've made about graphing the position versus time of moving objects. But the big thing I want you to get out of this graph here is that we're trying to go through and solve for when these two objects meet. And you can see on the graph, there's a point right here. That is where these two lines meet graphically. But really what that means is at that point in time, the two cars are going to be at the same position. And it's that time and position that we're trying to solve for. Now, it might seem somewhat obvious that when the faster car catches the slower car over here, they're going to be at the same position. But what's not typically obvious is mathematically how we represent that. So literally what we're going to do is equate the position of the fast car to the position of the slow car. And this is the point where we turn to the kinematic equations. You see, there's one kinematic equation which relates the position of an object at any point in time to its initial position, velocity, and acceleration. And really all we're going to do is take that equation and apply it to each of our vehicles. Now what we have right here is an incredibly general equality where we've simply set one position function equal to another. But we haven't made either of these position functions specific to the vehicles yet. Really, this equality is a general form that we can fill out anytime two objects are going to meet. So now we're going to take this side of the equality right here and make it specific to our fast car. You see, the fast car starts at a position that we already decided was zero. So I'm going to say the initial position is zero plus the initial velocity. Well, the car is initially traveling at 25 meters per second multiplied by t. We don't know what t is. That's the time we're trying to solve for. Plus 1 half times the acceleration multiplied by t squared. But neither of these cars are accelerating. They're both moving at a constant velocity, which means the acceleration is zero. And again, we don't know time. Realize both of these terms are zeros. And looking on the other side of the equality, the initial position of the slow car is not zero like our fast car. The slow car starts 100 meters ahead of the fast car. So our initial position is going to be 100. Oh, that should have been blue. Kids, I'm sorry. We're going to pretend that's blue. My bad. But this leads us up to an idea here. Remember earlier I said it was arbitrary as to which vehicle we said started at position of zero. And we chose to say this fast car was starting at a position of zero. But if we'd said the slower car was starting at a position of zero, that would have made this initial position zero right here. But over here, the initial position would have been negative 100. Negative because the fast car was starting 100 meters behind. Ultimately, it's all going to wash out in the math here, though. But moving on to the velocity of our slow car, that slow car is moving at 20 meters per second for some unknown time t. 
And again, just like the fast car, the acceleration of the slow car is zero. So that term zero. And cleaning this all up a little bit, we can solve for time. And we find that it's going to take 20 seconds for the fast car to catch the slow car. Now, actually, I actually want to back up just a step here to this line of math right here. It looks as though it's just math, but there's actually something really important hiding out right here with this 5t, or more importantly, with the 5. You see, this 5 is what we call the relative velocity between the fast and slow cars. Or really, you could just say it's how much faster the fast car is going compared to the slow car. But going back to the original problem, now that we know the time it takes for the fast car to catch the slow car, we can go through and solve for where, over here, the two cars are going to be at the same position. You see, we have position functions for each vehicle. So when we take this time and substitute it back into really either side of our position function equations, it should spit out where the two vehicles are going to meet. So the position where they meet is going to be equal to either 25 times 20, or you could say it's also equal to, subbing our 20 in right here, 100 plus 20 multiplied by our time, which we know is 20 seconds. And we find the two vehicles meet at a position of 500 meters. So remember, anytime you have two objects which are going to meet at some position, you can set their position functions equal to each other, and then really just fill out that form of position functions in order to make it specific to the situation. I don't care if they're both going in the same direction or opposite directions. I've got an example of that right here. Or if one of the objects is accelerating, you can see that here as well. But I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.